Hi, Dr. Talbot here again to talk about the third pillar of health, which is to stabilize glucose. There are many reasons to keep a tight control of glucose levels. Because glucose, which you might often hear called blood sugar, is the preferred source of energy for our brains, and glucose helps to fully metabolize calories from fat. Blood sugar levels that drop too low may stimulate hunger and cravings, while glucose levels rising too high will slow our ability to burn fat. The key intermediary in the relationships between blood glucose, oxidation, inflammation, and stress hormones, which I'll cover in the next video, is the hormone insulin. Most people associate insulin problems with diabetes because of its primary role in regulating blood sugar levels, but insulin has many additional functions in the body. Not only does insulin regulate blood sugar levels within an extremely narrow range, it's also responsible for getting fat stored in our fat cells, getting sugar stored in our liver and muscle cells, and getting amino acids directed towards protein synthesis in our muscles. Due to these varied actions, insulin is sometimes thought of as a storage hormone because it helps the body put all these sources of energy away in their respective storage depots for use later. Because insulin stimulates fat synthesis and promotes fat storage, there's a widespread misbelief that insulin circulating in the body induces weight gain. And this misconception has led to a variety of diets that promote the idea that weight loss can be achieved by avoiding certain foods such as carbohydrates that stimulate insulin secretion. Unfortunately, this simplistic view of energy metabolism is only partly correct. Proponents of these diets fail to distinguish between a normal insulin response to meals in which temporarily elevated blood levels of insulin quickly return to normal levels after meals and an abnormal insulin response in which insulin levels stay elevated for prolonged periods following meals. When we eat appropriately, which is covered in detail in the Secret of Vigor book, levels of both insulin and leptin will rise appropriately following meals, providing us with appetite controlling benefits. But they also fall appropriately, keeping oxidation, inflammation, and other biochemical processes from getting out of control. The abnormal insulin metabolism, known as insulin resistance, leads to a reduction in the body's cellular response to insulin. That reaction, in turn, interferes with regulation of blood sugar, increases appetite, and blocks the body's ability to burn fat due primarily to direct blocking of insulin function by cortisol, as well as indirect interference of insulin activity by oxidative free radicals and inflammatory cytokines. When insulin resistance is combined with a poor diet, such as one that's high in fat or refined carbohydrates, the result is the metabolic condition known as Syndrome X, a disorder that can have an impact on virtually every disease process in the body. One of the problems with insulin resistance and the resulting blood sugar fluctuations is a process called glycation, in which a sugar molecule becomes bonded to a protein or a lipid. Most often, glycation occurs in the body when glucose or fructose in the blood remains too high for too long and becomes bonded to a cell surface protein. A glycated protein, which we refer to as an age for advanced glycation end product, can be highly reactive and can set off a chain reaction of oxidative and inflammatory damage in whatever tissue they occur. Ages also tend to be cleared from the body very, very slowly. So they have the potential to stimulate these chain reactions for a prolonged period of time. Some of the main dietary offenders that lead to age accumulation and upset biochemical balance are high sugar foods. Things like soda, ice cream, donuts, cookies, or sugary breakfast cereals. And other foods that quickly convert to sugar or glucose in the bloodstream. Things like highly processed grains white bread, rolls, instant rice, those types of things. Sugar can be toxic to many tissues by permanently attaching to proteins through the glycation process. Wherever sugar attaches, it triggers cellular micro damage that creates inflammation. The inflammation in turn produces enzymes that break down protein, thus resulting in damage to surrounding tissues. 
To make matters even worse, glycation also leads to what we call cross-linking of proteins, changing healthy tissues from soft, supple, and flexible to stiff, brittle, and painful. These stiffened sugar protein bonds form in every type of tissue, including joint cartilage, muscle tendons, brain neurons, blood vessels, skin, and even immune system cells, which is why scientists are finding links between glycation and chronic diseases of aging, such as cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, and arthritis. We know from previous videos in this series and from chapter four of the Secret of Vigor book that inflammation in any tissue can be caused by excessive exposure to free radicals and lead to both accelerated aging and generalized tissue breakdown. With ages, we have a direct problem with cell-to-cell -cell signaling that is compromised by sugar-coated proteins. We also have the indirect damage caused by an age-stimulated increase in both oxidation and inflammation. Stress hormones, which we'll discuss in the next video, stimulate the creation of ages through an increase in blood sugar levels. Luckily, there are numerous ways to stabilize glucose and reduce your development of ages. I'll give you a few of them here, and you'll also learn more about all of these recommendations in part three of the Secret of Vigor book, which details a series of what I call VIPs for vigor improvement practices. Some of my favorite tips for stabilizing blood glucose are to consume fewer high sugar foods, so reduce your intake of soda, baked goods, and refined carbohydrates. Consume more low sugar foods, things like vegetables, lean meats, and healthy fats. Consume fewer fried foods because high temperature in cooking can create ages in the foods themselves. And maintain healthy blood sugar levels by getting regular intense exercise, getting eight hours of sleep each night, and incorporating stress reduction practices into your daily life. You can also supplement with specific glucose controlling dietary supplements. And the next video in this Four Pillars of Health series will explore some of those links as well as the links between stress hormone exposure and the other pillars of health. However, because cortisol, one of the primary stress hormones in our bodies, has direct and indirect effects on glucose levels, it makes sense to outline a few of those effects in this video about stabilizing glucose levels. Cortisol exposure stimulates a rapid increase in blood glucose levels via several mechanisms, including stimulating the release of glucose stored in the liver, interfering with insulin's action to stimulate cells to absorb glucose from the blood, and stimulation of appetite with specific cravings for sweets. Adding to the connection between cortisol and insulin resistance are a series of studies showing that inadequate sleep causes insulin resistance. This is particularly interesting because of the well-known link between sleep deprivation and elevated cortisol levels. Sleep researchers from the University of Chicago and several other universities have shown that inadequate sleep leads to a cascade of events starting with increased cortisol levels, which induces insulin resistance, leading to higher blood sugar or glucose levels, causing increased measures of both oxidative and inflammatory damage, stimulating appetite, and eventually leading to an abdominal fat gain. The research team compared normal sleepers, who average eight hours of sleep per night, to short sleepers, averaging six hours or less of sleep per night. They found that the short sleepers secreted 50% more cortisol and insulin and were 40% less sensitive to the effects of insulin than the normal sleepers. The researchers also suggested that sleep deprivation plays a significant role in the current epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. These research results are a concern for anyone who wants to balance their blood sugar control, especially in light of statistics from the National Sleep Foundation, which show a steady decline in the number of hours that Americans sleep each night. In 1910, the average American slept about nine hours per night, whereas today, we average only about seven hours of sleep per night, and many of us get far less than that, much to the detriment of our vigor. As I've said at the end of each of the previous videos in this Four Pillars of Health series, 
When we seek to restore vigor, we can't manage just oxidation or just inflammation or just glucose and stop there. We need to continue up the biochemical cascade as far as we can go. And that's what I'll cover in the next video about the fourth pillar of health, stress hormone exposure. See you there. This is Dr. Sean Talbot. Thanks for watching.